Yeah, okay, so it's a uh, clock on my end. So I guess um, I'll start. Welcome to the staple nine. People in the room I see, uh, thanks for coming. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I will probably close it not to get this good, but just drop them in um, and whenever I have time and otherwise at least I will uh, try and answer questions. Um, like I said, the state of Drupal 9, um, I did not create this presentation. It's uh, created by uh, Gabor Hochi of, uh, of Acquia. Um, the slides are open source, uh, so anyone can um, do a presentation just like this. Um, you can copy the slides. Um, you can find them on this URL where you can scan the, um, the QR code. Uh, you can can create a copy of the uh, slide and you can make your own adjustments. For example, like this, you can present yourself. Of course, my name is Ilke Block. Um, I work at you. I'm a senior Drupal developer there. Uh, I, I've been working Drupal uh, and I'm a contributor since 2007. Uh, you can uh, contact me on Twitter at Ilke Block. That's also my name on uh, .org and various other uh, networks and social media um like i said Borochi is the creator of this uh presentation um he's been an initi initiative coordinator for drupal 9. he's a drupal contributor since 2003 people who uh, can remember all the way back to drupal 6 he was actually um uh product manager i think um, he's been a committer to Drupal Core since 2007, and you can find him uh, at Gabor Hochi on Twitter. Um, so, uh, who is tr using Drupal 7? Um, just shout out in the chat. We don't have so many people. Um, I do, at least. Um, we still have a few customers running on Drupal 7. I bet most agencies do. Um, and um, what we usually say when uh, talking of what used to be the case, and Drupal 7 is uh, Drupal 7, the Drupal 8 transition is the last one for this to prove that uh, moving from the major version to the next was a major undertaking. Um, basically, it involved a rebuild to move Drupal 7 to, uh, in this case, Drupal 7 to 8 or Drupal 9. Um, the reason for that is uh, what you saw here. Um, when a new a major version of Drupal was started in the past, um, a fork was created at the time uh, the, the, the new version, let's say, was released. Um, a fork was created and people went crazy adding new stuff, uh, stuff out that um, uh, uh, no longer didn't uh, or didn't cut it anymore. Um, and when the new version came out at the other end, it was uh, completely different. Um, you could still see the similarities, but stuff was not compatible anymore. Modules need to be rewritten, um, that sort of thing. Um, so when you're coming from Drupal 7 to Drupal 9, um, prepare to do a read of your site. Luckily, there's a few um, tools that you can use. There's upgrade status, upgrade status module um, that will tell you if there is a Drupal 8 version for uh, the contributed modules that you have in your site. Um, there's the Drupal module creator that helps you uh, upgrade your custom code. Um, convert it, uh, port it, uh, change the code into something that is um, compatible with Drupal 8 and or 9. And lastly, the migrate suite that's in core Drupal 8. Um, I think it's fully stable since Drupal 8. Um, Uh, and that's because of the multilingual module that is now in core as well. Um, 
so that means that there is a full migration suite that you can use to uh, migrate your settings and content. Um, okay. Having said that, uh, if you want to move from Drupal 7 to uh, 8, 9, um, how much time do you actually have uh, running on Drupal 7? Um, actually, um, Drupal 7 end of life uh, was going to be uh, November 2021, the same as uh, Drupal 8, but with all the uh, Corona COVID uh, read that we are in right now, uh, it was actually decided to accept by one year till November 2022. Um, one option I did not mention yet, if you have a Drupal 7 site or basically any any uh, Drupal site really um, that no longer needs any content updates. So you essentially don't need um, the content management part anymore. Um, you could get an archive copy or a copy, let's say, I'll, I'll post um, link in the chat. Um, that is an interesting call about this. Um, that explains how you can create a static copy of a Drupal site so that you can still leave it um, around, but you don't need to maintain the, the CMS anymore. Um, then the other option, um, after November 2022, is that there will like it was with Drupal 6, there will be um, a commercial uh, extended support program. Um, there will be certain selected vendors uh, that you can uh, get a subscription from and they will make sure that any relevant security uh, is for Drupal 7 modules or sites um, will be made available for, for Drupal 7 as well, for the Drupal 7 versions of contributed modules. Um, like before, it will also be true that they will be obliged to open source those patches. So even if you don't get a subscription, you get some benefit from this. Uh, the risk there is that um, they obviously are only obliged to support the modules that their customer sites use. So if you have some module in your Drupal 7 site that no um, customer, the commercial vendors use, um, you're basically out in the world and you'd have to take measures. Um, so that's Drupal 7. Uh, like I said, um, Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 or 9 depends a little bit on what you would rebuild uh, right now. Um, while I'll explain in a, in a bit. Um, the reason that it is last time is that since 8 um, innovation um, is approached in a different way. Like I said, um, Drupal 8, basically last version where fork was created, um, everything went and stuff was rewritten, pulled apart, put back together again. Um, Drupal 8 to 9 or even 10 uh, is different. What's so different? There's um, three essential parts to that, three key mechanisms. Um, the first is semantic versioning. If you look at the version numbering on Drupal 7, you see two version positions, let's say. And it used to be the policy that uh, there will be no new features in, um, in minor releases. So Drupal 7.0, is essentially the same as the very latest uh, Drupal 7 version right now. Uh, bugs have been fixed, security holes has been, have been fixed, some very solid features have been added, but uh, that's uh, not very significant. It's mostly the same. Um, what semantic versioning allows is um, you get a, a third position in, uh, in your version identifiers. Um, um, which allows you to express that you have feature releases. So um, 
you have, for example, we are now by now at Drupal 8.9.8, I think. Um, that's uh, the last position of that indicates um, uh, the uh, maintenance release, let's say. It's, it's called the patch position. Um, it means that um, bugs have been fixed. The middle position, and then nine in this case, indicates that actual new features uh, have been added. Uh, so along the way, uh, Drupal has gained a lot of functionality uh, in its lifetime. Um, for example, media library, layout builder, um, big pipe came along, uh, a minor release, all that sort of thing. Um, what also was very important was scheduled releases. Um, those feature uh, releases came out every six months. Um, this means that um, feedback can be uh, received much quicker. Um, people don't need to wait for and the new major uh, version to come out before they see their hard work. Um, like out in the wild, they can actually use uh, what they've built. Um, and the third innovation mechanism is experimental projects. Um, this is a mechanism where uh, Drupal core may actually choose to add uh, new functionalities that um, are not completely done. Uh, for example, they might uh, pass accessibility tests, for example. Um, and this also allows to get feedback in order to allow people to work with the new functionality um, and the maintainers to gather feedback and uh, tweak. Um, by the way, uh, in the lifetime of Drupal 8, um, it was found that it's important to add backwards compatibility, at least also on those experimental projects, uh, because the community got bitten by a few, um, a few changes here and there that were not backwards compatible. So. If we have these uh, great feature releases and keep adding features, and why do we actually need Drupal 9 then? Um, these are the main reason, third-party dependencies. Um, there's a lot of third-party dependencies. Actually, one of the um, mottos of Drupal was getting off the island. Um, Move from the not invented here syndrome where Drupal tried to build everything themselves. We've moved off the island and we started seeing the great stuff that communities are building. Um, these are by means the only ones. These are the most important ones. Uh, Symphony, Twig, jQuery, jQuery UI, um, and CK editor. And these other projects have their own uh, sketch, their own release cycles. Uh, jQuery UI is end of life, actually. Um, CK Editor 5 is out, um, but it's an entire rewrite. Uh, so the update is not actually very easy. Um, but the most important one of these dependencies is actually uh, Symphony. Because Symphony 3, which is what is in Drupal 8, will end of life in Q4 of 2021. That also means that um, the security and bug fix for Drupal 8 needs to end then because um, one of the options might be that the Drupal community will start uh, maintaining like a fork of Symphony. Um, we, we end up in the same situation as we uh, used to be in, so we don't really want that. And then to give people some time, we actually need to stop development of Drupal 8 start um, moving to Drupal 9 um, at that time. And that was in Q2 of 2020 of, of this year. And then, uh, like was the case with uh, Drupal 8, the 9 starts to cycle again with half year uh, feature release. Sort of one of those, um, I think it's already started in beta, actually. Um, now let's do some crystal balling because um, Symphony 3 end of life was in 2021. Actually, there's another date coming up. That's the Symphony 4 end of life. 
So if you've been paying a chin, that must mean that's also the time when triple nine uh, security and bug fix support needs to end. And that in turn means that actually very uh, not that far ahead in the future, we will need a Drupal 10. So this means that uh, we need to get used to this cycle. We need to get used to uh, new versions um, of Drupal coming much more quickly. Uh, we need to make sure that it's not a huge deal anymore. And actually it's not, and I'll tell you uh, why. In, uh, in the... But uh, let's take a breather, uh, right? Because this is mind blowing. I just told you that um, in basically a few months time of Drupal 10, well, longer than a few months, but uh, still very, very soon. Um, at least what this means, we cannot afford the hard upgrade path of Drupal 7 uh, to 8 and before anymore, right? So what do you do to uh, mitigate that problem? The deprecation process. Uh, what this means is uh, that stuff doesn't get removed like we did from going from Drupal 7 to 8. Um, we leave the old stuff in. We tell people uh, with certain mechanisms um, that are deprecated and they be moving to uh, the new stuff. So what does this look like? This is the Drupal 8 API, um, something got deprecated and basically replace a new solution, but the uh, uh, deprecated API is still there as well. That went on for a while. We ended up in 8.9, uh, in the 8.9 API, some more stuff was deprecated, some more new stuff added. Um, and what is the trick with Drupal 9? Of course, we already said that uh, we will be updating those third-party dependencies. But in addition to that, all the deprecated stuff is getting removed. So in other words, the Drupal 9 API is exactly the same as the Drupal 8.9 API, uh, minus all deprecated parts. Uh, and plus, of course, those third-party dependencies having been updated. That also means that Drupal 8 code that is not using deprecated APIs will continue to work on Drupal 9. Um, Well, this is where you can try out Drupal 9 uh, quickly. I'm not sure why this slide is there, so move on to the next step. Um, there's five steps to upgrade from Drupal 8 to 9. Let's go through them one by one. Actually, you don't need to do this in order. You can do them in any order you, you like, as long as you make sure um, that you do them all before entering the last step. Step one. Ensure that your environment is compatible with Drupal. There's a few uh, requirements. Um, PHP 7.3 is an important one. Um, lots of older PHP versions still running out there. Um, I was just working on um, a project this week that is still on PHP 7.0, um, which needs to be updated, uh, which needs to be updated obviously before we can uh, move to Drupal 9. Um, Drush 10 is an important one as well, although that's usually more within your own control as a site maintainer. Um, database versions are important. Uh, if you're on MySQL, it would be 578. Um, other database databases have their own version requirements. Uh, MariaDB is 1037, for example. Um, that sort of thing. Um, Luckily, there's tools to tell you if you're on the correct version. Um, number two, keep Drupal 8 core up to date. Um, now that we're on 8.9, um, this is less important. Um, of course, you should be on 8.9, uh, but um, there's no more new versions coming. So if you're on 8.9, you're fine. And actually, we move to Drupal 9, only 8 from 8.8 .8 and 8.9 are supported. So that's an important thing to keep uh, in mind. Um, security um, support will actually assume on 8.8, .8, so you, you need to be on 8.9 from that point on if you uh, if you want security fixes. 
Number three, three um, update contributed projects to their latest versions. Um, actually, Drupal.org is helpful here um, because it tells you the uh, version requirements for Drupal. It uses a um, bit of an esoteric uh, way to tell you. Uh, developers are probably uh, aware of what this is. This is the way that Composer uh, uh, writes down version requirements. It's also the way that um, Drupal modules since uh, a while can uh, supply their version requirements in their info file. Um, there are, uh, at the top uh, token module, it's that it needs either at least Drupal 8.8 .8, or it needs Drupal 9 or higher. And the reason that it needs to be um, written this way is that this also um, follows semantic versioning, which says that, which I forgot to mention, that the first um, uh, version position in a subversion number, so uh, for example, 8.9.8, uh, um, the first version can only change when um, uh, compatibility or needs to change when compatibility is lost. And that's exactly what happens from Drupal 8 to 9. Um, because, well, at least for that Symfony update, and also because um, we are taking the chance to remove a lot of those deprecated APIs. So that's why uh, this version requirement needs to be written down like this, because at least 8.8 .8 does not include 9. It includes the thing um, at least at long, as long as it starts with it. Um, another example is web form. Um, it requires at least eight or nine. The different way to uh, to note it down, but it's very similar as well. So, um, how does a module uh, declare that it needs um, Drupal 9? And since uh, um, contribution day, this might be relevant for you as well. If you're uh, working on some contributed modules uh, and you want to make sure they're 9 compatible, um, this is a way that a module can um, show that it's compatible with both 8 and 9. This is exactly what is shown on, yeah, on the project page. Um, this in the info file was induced in Drupal 7.7 before it uh, just said core, code, and it said 7 or 8. Um, and obviously that was not enough because we needed modules to be compatible with two major versions or maybe even three major versions uh, at some point uh, in the future. Uh, this new key was introduced core version requirement that it is possible to express that the module is compatible with more than one version. Um, so that version number of token module 8.x.1.7 and that 8x is actually a bit weird. Um, that used to be the way that um, Drupal module expressed that they are compatible with 8 or 7 or 6 or whatever. Um, and luckily, we know long this. If you uh, saw the first number of what for, it looked like this. It didn't have that silly prefix. Um, and actually, uh, semantic versioning is now available for all projects. So that's uh, that's very nice. Um, projects no longer need to use that uh, a.x prefix. Be aware that um, you will need a new major version. Um, you'll find that the 5.x version of web form still has the 8.x prefix. Um, and actually you would 6.0 version um, for Drupal 9 compatibility. Uh, so things with Drupal 9 compatibility in Contrib. Uh, these are some statistics from the top 200 projects. Um, and you can see that 87% um, is compared with Drupal 9. These are statistics, by the way, from uh, G12. Um, so it's a bit older. It's probably a bit better now uh, than it was then. Um, and then a few uh, 
falls down in a few um, other areas where um, there's only in that basically that core version requirement change that needs to be applied to info yaml all the way up to um, it really be uh, just automatically and needs manual review um, so let's move to number four step four uh, for getting ready for Drupal. It move deprecated APIs in your custom project. Um, the base what we said earlier, I need to uh, replace uh, uh, the use of a deprecated API with a new replacement. Uh, and I'll show you in a minute how that works. So, Wow, right. Um, we are not on Drupal 9, but I've basically told you that you could ready in towards Drupal 9, right in your Drupal 8 set. Um, all the time while Drupal 8 is still running. It's pretty cool. And then only a step, that's a pretty important one to do at the very last, because it's update core itself to Drupal 9. So to recap, um, ensure your environment is compatible with Drupal 9, um, the PHP version, Drush version, database version. Uh, make sure your Drupal 8 core is up to date. Um, update contributor checks to the latest versions. Obviously, they will need to be 9 compatible as well. And then remove deprecated API use in your custom uh, code. And all of that, basically, you can do whenever you like. Um, you can uh, start with four and then do a bit of three um, and um, at the meantime talk to your hoster when they can uh, make sure that you are on php 7.3 and then when all of that's in place you can update uh, core it's drupal 9. <coughs> PA is for the win i see laurie in the chat yeah um uh, Lori uh, gave a nice um, summary of romantic versioning means. Um, so basically, the last thing is the patch value. It's only bug fixing. Uh, y is the version, and that adds functionality, but it's still backwards compatible. That's an important part of. And then this position is the major version. Um, and that can increase, uh, or that should increase when there is no more backwards compatibility, which is exactly what we're doing when we, um, at least not 100% backwards compatibility, right? Because um, that's what we are removing by moving to C4, uh, by removing APIs Drupal. And of course, and when you make sure that you are still using APIs that are still in Drupal 9, be fine. Uh, but we can say that it's backwards compatible per se. So, up tools. What tools do you have at your disposal to uh, get your project up to date and ready for Drupal 9? Um, let's look at the deprecation just as an illustration. This is a um, famous one Drupal set message. Um, you use this all the time. It's used to uh, set the messages that you uh, see usually in uh, green, red, and yellow uh, at the top of the page in a Drupal site uh, to inform someone that uh, settings have been saved or some error has occurred, that sort of thing. That all used to work through Drupal set message. However, that was recorded, as you can see in the annotation in Drupal 8.5, and it will be removed in Drupal 9. It, it has been now. Um, it also tells you, uh, use this method. Sorry, I'm pointing at my shared screen. Use this method, Drupal core messenger, messenger interface, add message instead. Um, this add deprecated um, is not just there to tell you, it's also there to tell uh, your IDE that thing has been deprecated. In uh, an IDE that understands this, like PHP Storm, um, you will actually see that calls to this method, uh, Drupal set message, will um, be strike through, for example, so that you can see, hey, wait, I shouldn't be using this anymore. 
Um, in addition, you see the trigger error. So if you do end up um, running this method um, and you make sure that um, deprecation errors being shown, it will actually trigger an error that you are uh, made aware as well that someone is calling this. Um, and then, uh, not unimportantly, um, there's actually a backwards compile um, implementation so that if your code calls this bit, uh, it does keep working. It's just working through the uh, method. So it's basically an adapter now to make sure that uh, code calling that old stuff will continue to work. Um, upgrade status. This is a really important tool. Really useful tool. I did um, uh, yesterday. I did a, a live coding session over in the OneShoe booth demonstrating this. Um, this basically tells you what you need to do. I think this is actually a screenshot from uh, an older version. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, it tells you those um, prerequisites: um, the Drupal core version, the PHP version, uh, if you're on the right database version or not. And uh, I recommend to actually use the 3.0 version of upgrade status because it's very task oriented. Um, it will first uh, say, okay, uh, hey, look, you have all these uh, modules, but they are not uh, enabled. So just remove them. That's um, a big right there. And then moving on, um, it will use the metadata from uh, Drupal.org to uh, check if according to at least the project page of the module itself, uh, there is a compatible version of the module not. Um, and whether the current from that you have deployed is compatible through full nine or not. So it tell you, okay, uh, modules you need to update because there is a Drupal 9 compatible version for it. Um, uh, this bunch of modules you need to collaborate with the maintain of the project because uh, they're not ready yet, Drupal 9. And oh, by the way, this entire long list um, of all these modules, you're fine uh, with those uh, because they're fully Drupal 9 compatible. Um, and last but not least, it will also um, we we'll scan uh, the code for these deprecations. Of course, that's um, for the projects that's most relevant for uh, your custom code. On a contribution day like this, it might also be useful to do it on um, a contrib module so that you can help uh, the maintainers of those modules to get ready for Drupal 9. Um, but that will actually scan code uh, for um, uh, deprecated code use. So very important tool, highly recommended to install if you're getting ready for Drupal 9. Um, another thing to mention is the um, Drupal Rector project um, that can actually uh, do some selected deprecations automatically. Um, in the screenshot, you see, you see um, the example that we were looking at just now, the Drupal set message. Uh, you see it's actually uh, being replaced by uh, this messenger at status. Um, so it can suggest changes uh, automatically, which is uh, pretty useful as well, especially for working on contrib modules because it gets you a head start for a patch um, for making a module Drupal 9 compatible. Do be aware. Um, that it covers about 42% of all issues, um, of all deprecation issues. So it's by no means um, uh, all covering, but it's it's like a nice head start. Um, then of course, uh, not an important, if you have tests, run your automated tests against Drupal 9. Um, Something else that's useful, uh, this is especially useful for um, working on contrib project, uh, projects. Um, you can tell the Drupal CI um, to do uh, static analysis for deprecated code use. Um, and you can tell it to, uh, to stop when it finds one. So that's, um, that's useful as well. So statistics that we saw earlier, um, they can be found at Acquia. Uh, Drupal does run upgrade status on um, 
the latest versions of completed modules, um, but it doesn't make those statistics available. They are available on this page. Um, so that's a good one as well to, uh, to have a look at. So that uh, sums it about up. Um, what are the new features of Drupal 9? Well, if you were paying attention, um, this is what Dries had to say about this. The big deal about Drupal 9 is that it should not be a big deal. There are not really no new features in Drupal 9. Uh, Drupal 9.0 is essentially identical to Drupal 8.9. Um, having said that, um, there are a few things coming up. Um, the Claro theme, this is the new administration theme. Uh, it's experimental in Drupal 8 and 9.0. Um, hopefully it will be uh, made stable uh, some, sometime soon in a um, feature release for Drupal 9. And then eventually um, in Drupal 10, uh, the current 7 theme is probably going to um, be removed. Um, and it will completely replace uh, 7, the admin theme for Drupal. Workspace is some, uh, also experimental. Class table in the Drupal 9 lifecycle. It allows you to prepare uh, like bundles of content, um, add them all together and publish them uh, at the same time. Um, very practical for um, preparing like a, a marketing campaign or something. Media and layout build is probably also going to be um, a point of attention. They are stable, um, but they are not uh, integrated uh, to be in Drupal yet. They are like um, hanging off a little bit tight. They're not first class cities like Fuse is, for example. Um, Drupal is not based on the default, so there will be a lot of work there. Help topics coming up. Um, it's a currently experimental module um, that aims to refocus um, Drupal help on task-oriented texts. Uh, what we have now is the basically the hook help approach where every module can implement that and add a snippet of text to uh, like a central help location. Um, help topics uh, aims to put text where you need it, right where you want to perform a task. So that's a great initiative as well. Um, and then there's this uh, Olivero. It's a front theme uh, that's supposed to be a Drupal core in the nine as well. Um, and it's supposed to replace Bart, which is starting to look all in the tooth. Uh, I think it was added with Drupal 7. Um, so this will give uh, this front end by default a nice clean look as well. Of course, not that relevant for building sites with custom, uh, custom themes. Um, also speaking about the CK pattern, that's going to be um, unsupported somewhere on Drupal 9's end of life. Uh, so it needs to be replaced somehow. Uh, CK Editor 5 is an option. Um, but uh, other options could be uh, using other WYSIWYG editors. CK Editor 5 is a completely different approach. Uh, so um, one cool uh, aspect of it is that it includes collaborative editing. So maybe there's something there as well. That's also very interesting, uh, but it's not clear yet what, uh, what direction Drupal will take. Um, and there's a lot more to come. Drupal 9 of them will actually be released to the second 20. Um, so uh, let's get excited for that. So in summary, um, Drupal 7 to 8 and or 9 is the last big step. Uh, coming from Drupal 7, you will need to rebuild your site, but that will be the last time you need to. Um, there will be Fender extended support until the end of 2025. Uh, so that's good to know if you, for whatever reason or other, you cannot move uh, from Drupal 7 yet. Um, Drupal 8 to 9 is the easiest upgrade in a decade. Um, I have never just, just updated the site from one major version to the next. Uh, what used to be the case is 
um, people would skip major versions and then they would rebuild the site that was built in Drupal 5 and Drupal 7, for example. Um, that's no longer needed. It's a much better idea to keep up uh, and uh, upgrade in, uh, when you can. Um, some work is involved, but by no means as much as to be the case with uh, previous major versions. Uh, keep up with Drupal 8 core and contributed projects. Um, Drupal 8 core keep us not that hard anymore because we will only be having um, uh, maintenance releases basically. Um, make sure that you have um, your own uh, use of uh, Delper KPIs with the tools available. And then when everything is in place, uh, your uh, hosting environment is uh, up to speed with the proper versions. Uh, all your tests are clear going um, running on Drupal 9, then you can actually do the upgrade. And well, yeah, you're getting read within your Drupal 8, right? Um, all this is happening in Drupal 8 and only we're finished uh, and move to Drupal 9. Uh, which is pretty exciting. Um, and then last but not least, 9 will continue the same uh, way that Drupal 8 did. Um, every half year there will be a new release, um, new and exciting stuff uh, for uh, your project or uh, everyone to try out. Um, where can you find more information about us? Uh, the Drupal 9 landing page, drupal.org slash 9. Uh, the status of contrib projects, that was that statistics page that I showed you earlier. Um, you can ask questions on the Drupal Slack at the D9 readiness channel if you are having um, issues with this. There are Slack meetings every Monday at 7 p.m. UTC. Uh, and now I would like to thank you you can review these slides uh, through this QR code. And now I will have a quick look while I put this up in the chat if there are any questions. And otherwise, this is uh, all I have. Okay, hey, nobody has any more questions, then uh, let's all get back to contributing to uh, the great thing that is Drupal. Thank you very much and uh, see you later, bye-bye.